let's have a look on how we can create this grungy line effect. So here is our source image. First thing we need to do is to separate our subject. There are many ways of achieving this, but I will use the Select Brush tool. This allows me to quickly select the subject. While selecting, the marching ends sometimes can be difficult to see, but with the help of the Quick Mask option, Affinity will show the non-selected areas in red. You can toggle the Quick Mask from the toolbar or by pressing Q on the keyboard. This makes it a bit easier to see what is selected and what is not. Once I'm happy with the selection, I can press the Refine button on the toolbar, which will pop up the Refine Selection dialog. I will set the preview to white matte and refine the final selection. If you're interested in making and refining selections, check out my earlier videos. This looks about right. Let's select a new layer with mask for the output and then press OK. Excellent. I have a new layer with only my subject showing up. Let me reposition it so it is more towards the center of the composition. As the final effect will be in black and white, I'm going to add a black and white adjustment on top. In the black and white adjustment dialog, we're going to lower the reds so the skin gets darker. Nice. We now have our base image. I'm going to apply a Merge Visible by right-clicking on the Channels panel. This will create a new layer with what we are seeing right now. I won't be needing the layers below, so let's hide those. On our new layer we just created, I'm going to add a Motion Blur by clicking on the Filters in the Layers panel and selecting Motion Blur. Let's make sure the rotation is set to zero and increase the radius until we have some fair amount of blur. I don't want the left part to be blurred, so I'm going to mask that out. I can press the B button or select the brush tool and with black as the color, I can paint out the areas which should not be blurred. Before painting, make sure that the motion blur layer is selected. All adjustment and filter layers come with a built-in mask, so we will be painting on this built-in mask. That looks good for now. Let's select the motion blur layer and duplicate it by either pressing Command J or by right-clicking on it in the Layers panel. I'm going to open up the filter options of the duplicated motion blur by clicking on its icon. In the dialog, I'm going to increase the blur radius so we get a longer trail. While the motion blur layer is selected, I'm going to select the brush again, but this time, with white, I'm going to get some of the blur back on the right side, which will create some blur in front of our subject. Pretty nice. Our document is still transparent. Let's fix that by adding a fill layer from the layer menu. The fill layer will use the current selected color, which is white in my case, so I get a white fill. Let's move the fill layer below our subject layer, creating a white background. To make the effect a bit grungy, I'm going to add some noise by adding a live noise filter. In my setup, the filter is added to the current layer but I want it to apply to the whole document, so I will drag and drop it on top of the layer stack. Now we can increase the noise intensity, and as you can see, this adds noise to our subject, but also to the white background. Perfect. Time to add the line effect. We can do this by adding a live halftone filter on top of the layers. Let's click on the filters icon in the layers panel and select halftone. In the halftone dialog, let's change the screen mode to line and decrease the line size until we get some pretty lines. We can also fine tune the contrast to our liking. That looks about right. Now, as a final step, I will make a duplicate of the subject layer and move this to the top of the layer stack. I don't need the motion blur filters on this layer, so I will remove them. Actually, this is also a very nice effect where you have the lines behind the subject, but not really what we're looking for. Let's open up the blend options and adjust the sword blend range so that the image blends in nicely with the lines we created. Awesome, and the effect is done.
Optionally, we can fine-tune the effects. For example, I can change the noise filter. If I zoom in a bit and modify the noise filter, you can see its effect. I also don't like how the shoes blend in, so let's get back to the top layer and open up the blend ranges again. And adjust the blend range. That looks much better. But still, when I zoom in, we can see the bottom of the shoes, which I find disturbing. To quickly fix that, I'm going to add a mask by clicking on the mask button in the layers panel, while the top layer is selected. This will add a mask layer to it, and now, if I select the brush and use black as the brush color, I can mask out the shoes from the composition. Awesome! If you like, you can also experiment with different blend modes for the halftone layer. For example, I can set it to multiply, which creates a more darker result. Or another interesting blend mode is the subtract blend mode. That's it for today's video. I do hope you liked this video and found it interesting. As always, thank you for watching and until the next video.